This 14-year-old entry-level camera took this epic picture. Who am I and how did I take this picture? Well, if you're one of my nine subscribers, you may have noticed a few hints in past episodes. Yeah, that's me in the company picture. And there, I work for Stoke Space. And I had the privilege to be on site during the launch of our reusable vertical takeoff and landing test vehicle this September. First, I have to thank my employer for generously releasing additional footage so I can show you some behind the scenes camera techniques. Before we do that, let me say how honored I am to be a part of the Stoke Space team and proud of the team that made aerospace history this September. Let's get down to the concept and the details. The concept that an out of date and inexpensive camera like this Nikon D5000 with the bundle kit lens can be used to get amazing pictures, it really does blow my mind. I love obsessing over specs and for the latest cameras. Every new model convincing me that finally this camera will make me a great photographer. How embarrassing. This picture proved to me that none of that matters. None of it. If this 2009 camera that you can buy right now on eBay with the same kit lens for about 160 bucks can get this kind of result, then what am I worrying about? Let's be honest, I probably will never stop being excited about new cameras. Like the new Sony A6700. Oh boy, what a hot tamale that one is. Despite that, I'm now all in on trying to extract the most from old gear. And this camera is now permanently saved from the trash bin. Now it's the camera that took the first published picture of Hopper in mid-flight. If this Nikon survives what's sure to be an exciting future capturing more Stoke milestones, it's getting gold-plated, and I have no plans to spare this little puppy from risky locations. Next, let's talk about how exactly did I get this picture. I definitely wasn't standing there while Hopper's thrusters ignited. No way. I'd be one toasty pickle. I learned a trick from a professional photographer by the name of Eric Kuna about these audio triggers. I'm not going to go into any details about how these products work because YouTube's full of videos on that subject, but specifically I used the Pluto brand trigger, which retails for about $130 before tax and shipping. And this is an alternative, the Myops Smart Trigger, and it retails for about $220. I'll put links to both in the description. Honestly, I would not recommend the Pluto for its audio trigger, even though it did its job and it was the device used in this picture. It's very finicky about setting the right threshold and it easily gets stuck in a feedback loop where it won't stop taking pictures. But real quick, the idea is you turn this thing on, you set a decibel threshold and you plug this into your camera and then you set up your camera in just the right way, and yeah, it takes pictures so you can stay nice and comfy and safe in the control room listening to the liftoff countdown. Now you may have noticed that the MyOps cost more than the used camera that took the photo. Yeah, that is a bit odd, but hey, maybe you can find a used MyOps? They are very sturdy, and my friend Eric had his blasted off his camera while Hopper was flying. In fact, we can see that here. Let's break this scene down. You can see there in the background, this little mound of inexpensive camera. That's the Nikon D5000, with a $10 tripod meant for a cell phone, and about 50 pounds of sandbags. And there down in front, well, that, my friends, is one of Eric's cameras. And guess what that dangly thing is? None other than a Myops trigger holding on for dear life. Stay in there, little buddy. You can do it. Oh, you almost had it. Eric reported back to me that it's still working. He had to buy a new battery, but otherwise it's still functioning. So if you do happen to find a used Myops, these things are built like tanks and they are pretty easy to configure as well as have great battery life. Before we finish this episode out, what drawbacks can you expect if you try to buy a 14-year-old camera 
and use it to get an epic picture. This entry level camera is known to not perform very well in low light situations compared to more expensive cameras. It's only a 12 megapixel sensor and it doesn't have a very good dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the darkest and lightest elements in the scene and generally as camera sensor technology progresses, so does dynamic range. So this particular scene was ideal. It was a very bright ambient lighting situation and the subject was large and well framed and both of those work together to play to the strengths of this old camera. So you might find if you push the boundaries of whatever camera you end up trying this out with, you might not get great results and you may find that you have to spend more money on these newer cameras to avoid things like blown out highlights or really noisy darker regions in the scene. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more, and give older cameras a shot. You might just be surprised. Take care.